is um, called uh, the flower bush, um, which is a, a plant that's native to the North Island of New Zealand. Um, it's another member of the daisy family. Uh, I mean, it's structured very similarly to uh, fox and cubs. Not, not quite the same colour though, it's far more yellow, less orange. And the leaves are nice and uh, they've got a sort of felt to them, which is quite distinctive. And the flower buds also, and the branches, also have this fine, quite chalky uh, surface to them. I wonder if the hand lens will show me, will show us that in more detail. Yeah, you can see that it's it's just like chalk really. It's as if some spider has been busy lacing web over the over the leaves. Uh, let's see if I can find a better example. Uh, well, here's a flower. You can see just how clothed in that felt it is and the branches yeah you can see just how clothed in that felty stuff it is um, I'm not entirely sure why it has uh, this on it but uh, it certainly makes it quite easy to identify um, we've had this plant in our garden um, for many years and I never knew what it was called until fairly recently so I'm, I'm, I'm proud that this is one I can name and tell you a little bit about. Um, I'm sure it, po it, it might be po uh, pollinated naturally by things like, well I'm not sure what insects are native to New Zealand, um, you might get like tuis uh, uh, pollinating it perhaps. Um, like, like little honey eaters. Um, this I'm not sure, not sure what it is. Um, this as well, don't know. This is a, a Budlia, just one that's not, not flowered yet. I mean this, this is also, these are from uh, China and they, they're often called butterfly bushes because or butterfly bush because uh, when they flower they attract they're very good at attracting butterflies I mean these are nowhere near flowering and to, to put it in perspective what I'll maybe do is show you what a buddleia looks like when it's it's uh, finished flowering So that's, that's a buddleia whose flowers are, are spent. Uh, more, more rough meadow grass, uh, brambles, produce uh, blackberries that we like to, to eat. Those are the flowers, the, the white uh, ones are the petals and those greenish ones at the bottom here are, uh, are the sepals. But you can see, you can see just how many stamens crowd that, and then the the stigmas as well. Uh, bra brambles, of course, do have uh, thorns. Um, maybe not so much these ones. Let's see if I can find a better example. Ah, here we go. So, so yeah, these are thought. These are thorns. Um, because they're they're modified branches for defence, and you know if you've ever had to uh, go through a thicket of brambles, uh, this is what makes it unpleasant as it is. There's a bee very close to me. Which will he, will he stay for the camera? Probably not. No. <laughs> um, ivy, of course. Um, fairly common, native, I um, think it's good nesting cover for birds, uh, Yorkshire fog, uh, another very very common grass, 
uh, is also also quite uh, quite hairy. You can see it's well. I don't know how obvious it is from this angle, but it's but it's quite. It's got quite a lot of uh, white hairs on it. This is, yeah, you can just about make that out. Um, sheep's fescue. Uh, this one is appears to be. This one seems to be flowering. You can just see the the anthers uh, sticking out there. just about see the the anthers sticking out and so that's a that's a good opportunity to see what the flowers look like this is um, more Yorkshire fog uh, again it's very 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 common you know um, I don't know why they call it Yorkshire fog though uh, has these nice reddish uh, spikelets uh I mean it's it's mostly more of the more of the same uh the same species. Um I think is this raspberry? It might, I think it might be raspberry. Uh rhubarb. Um I think they call this uh monk's rhubarb or I could be wrong. But it's another plant that's native to China. Uh, makes pretty good dessert. I uh, can't remember if I like it or not, but uh, my parents certainly do, so that's why they they grow it. Um, this, I think, is. I've often. I've never quite known for sure what this is. I've often thought it's uh, like a very a variegated version of a holly. I mean, if you guys know the answer to this, you know, I, I, I would uh, uh, feel free to write in the in the comments. Um, and this one, I, I don't know what it is, uh, or this. Um, some of the, we have like uh, docks, which uh, I'm not quite sure which which one this this is. I think it might it might potentially be broad leaf dock. Um, you know, the, the, um, dock leaves, some, some people say that, uh, if you get stung by nettles, you'd have, just have to wrap it, wrap the stung part in, in dock leaves. Um, I've, I've heard contradictory ex uh, accounts of whether that works or not. Um, my, uh, I know, I know, certainly know people who, uh, think, uh, it works. Um, I'm not going to test, I probably won't test it though, because I don't like being stung by nettles. Not many people do. And uh, these are the uh, the flowers. They've got very small flowers. The, the, the dock family is called um, Polygonaceae, or the, the knotweed family. And they call it uh, Polygon. Uh, Nasia because um, the flowers are often are often chained together um, I, these ones aren't aren't uh, flowering if it was if it was properly fruiting you know producing they, they produce uh, little structures called tubercles which act as the as the, the fruit bearing the seed and they just get uh, I'm not sure how they how they just how they get dispersed, but they must have a pretty good dispersal system because, you know, they they do get around quite a bit. Um, I'm just going to show you another plant that's also very common. This is called um, uh, cleavers, or uh, it has a variety of different names like, uh, well, cle cleavers. I think is the only is the polite one that comes to mind uh, right now. But it's a kind of uh, bed straw, or, or some people call it goose grass as well. Um, but it's a, it's a bed straw, and what it, uh, and it's also very, very common. You see it a lot in, in wooded areas, but um, 
but you see you see here these um, these prickles uh, I'm wondering whether you would call these spines or no, they look a bit more like thorns to me but but you know how um, you know how velcro works because um, the way that these plants get around is that um, they can detach and and uh, use these uh, hooks to hook onto the fur and hide of animals and get transported to different places, which would probably explain why they, they do so well. Um, these ones are actually flowering at the moment. Uh, if I can just, there you go. These ones produce nice little flowers. They don't look like very much, I mean, they're, they... But, but yeah, you get, you get the idea. There's, uh, got tiny, tiny flowers. And the leaves are arranged, um, in a ring around the stem. And they've got these, these points. So that just about uh, concludes today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the, uh, the, the plants that I showed you. Um, we will try and uh, get some uh, bir more birds in. Um, we, we just, we've got plenty of uh, place, good places to see birds um, near where, where I am. Um, and I'll, I'll hope to bring you more more videos um, from outside my backyard but that's I mean we've we've covered quite a good a good range of uh, things I hope this is all very educational because uh, you know you may well have some plants in your garden which um, if you've never known what they are um, you know I'm hoping that I've helped you uh, identify a few but uh, if you want to know more, subscribe to my channel and uh, and uh, next time I'll aim to get uh, somewhere different and uh, have a few more birds and maybe some mammals too. Uh, see you all. Life is good.